You open your eyes and don't know where you are. Everything is blurred in your vision and you can't say a word. A tube is sticking out of your mouth. The smell of blood makes you feel sick. There isn't enough air and you feel incredible pain. As if you are being cut. Wait, that's what's happening. You can feel the scalpel and the surgeon's fingers moving somewhere inside of you, but you can't move. From absolute helplessness and monstrous pain, you want to scream. What's going on? You've just woken up during surgery. This sounds like an endless nightmare. There's nothing worse than pain that you can't do anything about, especially if it's caused by carelessness from someone who isn't even aware of it. According to statistics published by the BBC, in only one operation out of 19,000 patients does one of them suddenly come to life. At the same time, a report, published in the journal Deutsches Arzteblatt, states that one or two patients out of a thousand wake up during the operation. And according to CBS News calculations, the number is a frightening 100 people in the US every day. The probability that this would happen to you is negligible. But it's not zero. So you are given intravenous anesthesia and you fall into a narcotic sleep. Consciousness isn't completely disconnected. Sometimes people see pleasant dreams and continue reacting to events in the world around them, although they don't realize it. But not this time. You suddenly come to your senses. The body doesn't listen. You can't even open your eyes. You hear muffled sounds, and you think that the operation is already over. But suddenly you hear the surgeon's voice. Scalpel, please. Everything inside of you is getting cold. You try to sit up, twitch, move even a finger to give the doctors a sign. But it proves useless. A few seconds pass, and then the scalpel is already cutting something inside, and the clips are getting deeper and the pain you are experiencing is probably the worst in your life. It rolls in waves from the chest, and each successive wave feels stronger than the previous one. You want to scream and be hysterical, but you can't even cry. You're completely immobilized and left alone with your feelings. It's like torture. Blood pressure changes, but remains within the normal range, so no one pays attention to it. You manage to twitch your leg a few times, but the doctors just hold it, thinking it's just muscle contractions, and continue their work. You lose consciousness several times from extreme pain, but then you wake up, again and again. But worst of all, there's an intubation tube in your trachea. It's ventilating your lungs artificially, but it's about a few breaths a minute. You start to suffocate. Your lungs are burning and even the unbearable pain can't distract you from it. What I'm describing isn't just a scary fantasy or a scene in the next Saw sequel. Canadian Donna Penner had just about this exact same terrifying experience. She had a diagnostic laparoscopy, a surgical operation in which small incisions are made in the patient's abdomen to examine the organs. But the anesthetic didn't work, and for an hour and a half, Donna had the worst experience of her life. Fortunately, the woman survived, but afterwards, she had to work through what happened with a psychotherapist for a long time. What exactly happened? The general anesthetic failed. It's designed to prevent any memory of events during the operation. Anesthesia is considered one of the top 10 discoveries in medicine. Without it, we wouldn't be able to treat many diseases and hundreds of thousands of people would have died. Unfortunately, despite all of the achievements of modern science, general anesthesia is sometimes misfurious. But can an anesthesiologist mistuck a really provid a person with a few hours of horror and trauma for life? According to informa shown from open sources, it's during hard operations that patients most often wake up at the wrong time. This is mainly an issue relating to the drugs that are used for the anesthesia. Some of them suppress heart activity, which means that you have to be as careful as possible with them. To put a person into unconsciousness, doctors use three different drugs. One of them puts them to sleep, another relaxes their muscles, and the third one turns off the pain. Each person requires an individually calculated amount of these drugs, depending on their age, weight, 
diseases, and many other factors. Even medications that you take periodically are taken into account. Experienced anesthesiologists know their job well. However, if any of the components aren't measured to the correct amount, you can come out of it on the operating table. This usually isn't a big deal. The person simply gathers what's happening around them in the form of vague memories and doesn't experience any pain. Perhaps after the operation, they will tell their loved ones that they heard the doctors moving. And that's it. This means that only the sleeping pill component was miscalculated, while the dose of the other drugs was measured correctly. Nothing critical. But if the proportions are different, the picture changes dramatically. A lack of an analgesic component can allow the patient to feel the surgeon's every move. At the same time, the muscle relaxant seduces the striated muscles so much that it's impossible to move. That's what happened to Donna Penner, and she's not the only one. A man named Sidney L. Williams had a 50% chance of dying during open-heart surgery. But something else happened. He was awakened by the sound of his chest opening, then felt an incredible pain. It came from his stopped heart. Like Donna, Sidney wanted to cry out, but he couldn't. Fortunately, he still managed to survive the operation. But the pain the man experienced on the operating table caused him to clench his jaw so hard that several of his teeth were broken. Another horrifying incident occurred with Stacy Gustafson, a patient from Colorado. She endured a horrifying experience during a hernia removal surgery in 2019 and is now suing the medical professionals involved in the procedure. During the surgery, Gustafson alleges that the IV administering the drug propofol became disconnected, causing her to wake up in excruciating pine, while the surgical incisions were being made in her abdomen. She was reportedly unable to move or speak but felt intense sensations of her insides being torn and burnt. Despite her attempts to get the medical team's attention, her pleas went unanswered. In 2003, CBS told the story of Carol Weirer. The woman was supposed to have her damaged eye removed, but the anesthesia didn't work properly. As a result, Carol saw everything that was happening to her, but she couldn't move. Although there was no pain, the operation caused a deep emotional trauma to the woman. Carol herself claims that she developed severe post-traumatic stress disorder, became afraid to sleep in a bed, and for several years used a chair. Instead, for this purpose. Fen Settle, a walk during a routine operation to remove his appendix. Fen recalls the sensation of choking on what seemed like a bottle cap lodged in his throat, which he later discovered to be a tube inserted to assist his breathing. Paralyzed and unable to communicate, he found himself trapped in his own body, with the surgical team unaware of his torment. This ordeal unfolded during a procedure at Huddersfield Royal Infirmary in March 2016 and has been likened to Mr. Settle's worst nightmare brought to life. Post-operation, he was told that his conscious experience had been nothing more than a dream. A much more chilling story was told by June Carson in the British tabloid The Sun. This unfortunate woman underwent abdominal surgery but received an insufficient dose of sleeping pills and pain relievers. She still remembers the agony and horror that she felt from the cuts. 15 minutes after the start of the operation, June suffered a heart attack from pain shock. Fortunately, the doctors were able to revive her. However, today, the article is no longer on the official website of the publication. Perhaps not all of June's story is true. Sarah Thomas, a 23-year-old from Watford, London, shared her traumatic experience of waking up during a tonsil removal surgery. She recalled feeling severe agony in her throat where the laser treatment was being applied and hearing clinical noises and staff moving around. Despite being conscious and in pain, Sarah was unable to move her body as her eyelids had been taped down and she had no way to signal that she was awake. Sarah described the ordeal as being trapped in her own body, screaming inside her head while the surgery continued. It took about 15 minutes for a nurse to realize that she had woken up. Seemingly a routine and simple surgery. However, 
Sarah woke up because her anesthesia was not properly monitored. As a result of this horrifying experience, Sarah continues to suffer from memories and cannot sleep properly due to nightmares. She had to leave her job, take antidepressants, and undergo lengthy therapy. But even that hasn't helped. A Reno man, Miles Brazil, went through a traumatic experience during a throat surgery at St. Mary's Regional Medical Center. He had arrived at the hospital after choking on an air pump cap while inflating a bicycle tire. Emergency room doctors were working to extract the cap, but during the surgery, Brazil claims he became conscious despite being reassured by doctors that he would remain sedated. According to his medical records, he was responsive during the procedure and exhibited signs of consciousness and pain. Brazil described his experience during the surgery as akin to torture, filled with terror and fear for his survival, due to the extreme pain, anguish, and helplessness he felt. He compared it to being buried alive with someone forcefully inserting gas-soaked rags into his body. Despite his inability to speak or move, he fought to survive, repeatedly blacking out and waking up over the course of nearly four hours during the procedure. Simon Rosenqvist, a young man in Sweden, experienced a traumatic incident during a lung operation. About 15 minutes into the 50-minute procedure, he woke up but was unable to talk or move due to the anesthesia. He endured excruciating agony for approximately 35 minutes before eventually passing out from the pain. After the operation, Rosenqvist informed doctors about his ordeal, providing a detailed account of what happened during the surgery. Doctors were shocked by his revelation. A doctor admitted that there were indications during the operation that something was wrong. Rosenqvist filled a complaint with the National Board of Health and Care in Sweden three weeks later. He expressed frustration over not receiving a clear explanation for the incident. Chloe Hahn is a model who has undergone numerous surgeries in her life, but one of her worst experiences was a botched nose job that caused her to wake up in the middle of the operation. She recalls seeing a dirty blanket with dried blood on it just before the anesthesia took effect. Midway through the operation, she regained consciousness and felt hot liquid pouring over her face, realizing it was blood. She attempted to scream but couldn't move. Although she wasn't in pain, Chloe feared for her life. After returning home from the surgery, she collapsed on her kitchen floor, unable to move for two days. She felt extremely ill during this time. When the bandages were eventually removed, Chloe was horrified by the appearance of her nose describing it as if it had been smashed with a hammer. Whatever it is, it's terrifying. If you were previously afraid of operations, you may now have developed a new phobia. But we have something to console you with. Every year, medicine improves. And today, anesthesiologists pay much more attention to patients than before. They are close by throughout the process and track a variety of factors, including brain function, heart rate, and blood pressure. All of this allows them to control the depth of the anesthesia. And lastly, I have one interesting question left. Is it possible, in principle, to survive heart surgery while conscious, that is, without general anesthesia? Oddly enough, yes. Moreover, some surgeries are performed in this way if a patient has certain conditions. For example, lung disease. So. Theoretically, there's nothing terrible about being conscious during surgery, but let it be agreed with the doctor. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this kind of content and can't imagine your life without scientific facts, subscribe to the channel. Write in the comments what topic you'd like to see on the channel. We're always ready to prepare something interesting for you.